What's up guys, Jack, Black Bear Crypto. Today I'm gonna to be doing a benchmark video on this behemoth of a build with the RTX 3070 gigabyte edition there and the Ryzen 9 5950X. It's underneath that Corsair heatsink. So I just installed the BIOS. I had to flash BIOS by putting the install agent on this USB, plugging it into the back here. Let me actually go around so I can show you guys how I did it. So I plugged this USB into the appropriate USB port right there that says BIOS, and then you just press that little button there and it will flash the BIOS onto there for you. It's really, really simple. Right now what I'm doing is I have an Ubuntu LTS install agent right here on this USB, and that's installing Ubuntu onto that 120 gigabyte SSD down there. Please don't mind the cable management that's all getting covered up in just a moment here. Man, this is some crazy RGB. I wonder if there's a way to turn that off. I know um, the 240 millimeter fans in the front are awesome and it looks pretty cool with the 140 millimeter fan in the back too. It's just a lot of RGB. I feel like I'd lose my mind a little bit if I had this as my pri like up on my desk as my primary workstation 24 seven. I'd go blind with the, uh, the amount of light that these things put off. I mean, seriously, look how bright that is. So as you can see, we are installing Ubuntu LTS onto this 120 gigabyte SSD right now. All right guys, so just a quick update as to where we're at. The initial install failed uh, because the PC automatically booted itself down and I believe the issue was the CPU overheating which causes an automatic system shutdown. What we've done to try to correct the issue is put more thermal paste on the CPU and then put the heat sink back on top of it. We're trying to install it again. So let's see, this is where we got stuck last time and it crashed. You know, minimal installation, install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi, click continue, and we'll see if we get further than we did last time. What do you guys think? Should I have put the GT710 in this build instead of the RTX 3070? I don't know, it's a pretty sick card. I was also originally planning on putting these two hard drives into this build, but unfortunately the power supply was too large, so got some other ideas for what we're gonna do with these hard drives. One of the ideas I had with these drives is to create some sort of Plex server or secure data server uh, that I can run out of my house so that way I can back up any footage or any documents into that data server and then share it, hopefully through a secure channel to anybody else who I want to share the information with. Yeah, as you guys can see, that Corsair HX 1200 is a huge power supply. The hard drive tray was supposed to go like right there. So it was gonna be pressed right up against the cables and it just wouldn't fit. So I needed to pull the hard drives out of there just so we can even get the system booted. And we're leaving this four terabyte SSD blank because that's just gonna be used as extra storage. The buyer has a really, really nice NVMe. Like this SSD has 500 read, 500 write speeds. This other one has quadruple that, if not more. I think it's like four or five times as quick read and write. So. Uh, that's definitely going to act as the boot drive and then this is gonna act as additional storage. Maybe we'll jerry-rig or duct tape some hard drive somewhere in here, although I don't know where we're gonna find the space. All right, and there we go, Ubuntu's installing. The computer's not freaking out anymore. The fans before were like a jet turbine. All right, guys, so Ubuntu LTS successfully installed. Seems like adding that extra thermal paste onto the heatsink or onto the top of the processor there definitely helped get the temperatures down. So let's go ahead and restart the computer. It's gonna tell us to remove the install medium. Pull out the LTS installer here. I have it written on there somewhere. There it is. Our LTS doesn't really, really show up, but use that USB many, many times. There we go, look at that. All right guys, so a slight change of plan here. I got into LTS and I realized that the tools to benchmark the CPU and the GPU weren't as user friendly as they would be in Windows 10. So instead I have my Windows 10 USB there and I'm installing Win 10 onto this 120 gigabyte SSD instead of LTS. The reason that I'm doing that primarily is because I want to use NiceHashMiner on Windows 10 to benchmark the CPU and the GPU for crypto mining. That's the easiest way to go about doing it. And keep in mind, I don't like NiceHash uh, per se. I don't think they're a terrible platform, but they do cause network centralization on the Ravencoin network as well as Monero recently. Mining pools can rent out hash rate from NiceHash to try to accumulate over 50% of the network hash rate. So it's really important that when you're mining for prolonged periods of time, you really shouldn't be using NiceHash. You should try to mine with a smaller mining pool to help decentralize the networks that you are investing in, that you are mining in. But as for today, I'm just doing a short benchmark for the CPU and the GPU, so I'm not really too concerned. All right, guys, so we got the Ryzen 9 5950X benchmarked here. It's mining on Monero. Uh, it's at 100% load. And let's see, the profitability is about 22, 23 cents a 
day, which is about what I expected. The RTX 3070 is still benchmarking here. Let's take a look at the CPU temperatures, see what they're at. You can see that the load on every single core is 100%. Let's check out the temperature. It looks like it's still pretty low right now, around 64 degrees Celsius. That is a reasonable temperature for a CPU. You don't want your CPU to go over 80 degrees Celsius. That's kind of the, the rule of thumb that I've always followed, but 65 is perfectly fine. This Corsair H100i Pro is doing the job just fine after I put some additional thermal paste onto the CPU. I didn't put enough initially and it was overheating and automatically shutting off the rig. You can see that. RTX 3070 benchmarking there. I love this car. This is such a nice looking car. This is my first 30 series GPU. I don't think I'll ever sell it. Non LHR RTX 3070 gigabyte edition gaming over. It's the gaming OC eight gigabyte edition. And the reason that I like this card so much, it's got pretty a pretty like minimalist model. I think it does have a little bit of RGB on the top right there, but um, it's really not too wild or spectacular. I also have the same model GPU in the 3070 Ti variant that's upstairs in my primary workstation. Just for anybody thinking about vertical mounting their GPU, this is the first one that I've done, but it is not worth it in my opinion. I had to use one of these Time 16 PCIe cables here that go into the PCIe bracket on the motherboard and then go underneath to cram into the slot on the GPU. Also, when you turn the PC down like this, it does seem to put a lot of weight on that bracket, on this rear bracket here. Um, so I'm really not a fan of the vertical mount. It looks cool, I wanted to try it, but for everyday purposes, I would definitely recommend going with the standard horizontal mounted graphics card. All right guys, so we got the GPU all benchmarked and overclocked. Uh, it's getting about 5960 mega hash on Dagger Hashimoto. The efficiency is pretty good at 381.36. Uh, let's take a look at our MSI Afterburner so I can show you my clocks. By the way, that's my cat zip in the background. I logged in on a Windows account that I had on another computer and I guess that was the background for some reason. Um, so let's look at the overclocks there, we got minus 500 core plus 1110 memory clock, and then we have a power limited at 58. So this is pretty fine tuned. I'm happy with these overclock settings. It's stable, it's mining. Uh, as for the CPU, I don't know much about CPU mining, so take a look at that terminal if you wanna check out what the clocks are. I haven't done any overclock work on the CPU. The CPU's maximum boost is 4.9 gigahertz and has 16 cores, so let's take a look at the temperatures again. All the cores are maxed out. Uh, and you can see that it's still sitting at about 63 degrees Celsius. So this overall is pretty good. The system's running smoothly, both uh, mining and uh, like GPU mining and Monero mining at the same time. So this is mining Ethereum on uh, Dagger Hashimoto. And then this is mining Monero on, I don't even know what algorithm or mining pool this is mining on, to be honest with you guys. And then if we take a look at nice hash, we can see that we're making about 254 a day prior to electric costs. And speaking of electricity, here's what we're getting at the wall, probably about 367 watts total from the wall. Now, I'm not gonna be leaving this up on nice hash or, or any miner, as I said. Got 30 cent electrical in the state of Maine now, so it's very marginally positive to mine. So even with the platinum rated power supply in this build, it's just not worth it to me to really keep the miners up and running. But that's about it, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, if you enjoy content like this, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, if you want to learn more about our stake pool, go to mainblockchain.com forward slash stake. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.